issue, a temper issue, it's better to step away and deal with this um, at a later time. Because this is very common, the caretakers do not mean to be um, inflicting these injuries, but in an emotional outrage, it could happen and is not acceptable. But pediatricians and other caregivers will play a big role in giving prevention to the families as to what they can do. This is the result of um, really bad uh, disciplinary practices. However, we have this, which is kind of, it could look like a, an impact with an object or a hand on this child's life. But we have to go through the whole medical history. Does this child have ever had similar bruises? Is this child have a bleeding, um, a bleeding tendency in the family? Um, has this child been sick? There are medical conditions associated with maybe mild colds, respiratory viruses, sometimes we don't know, that will give you this purpura, which is bruising that you can actually feel and palpate on the kid's skin, usually concentrated on the lower extremities, but of area. So before saying something is a bruise from an abusive type injury, we have to rule out medical conditions because they can present the same way, especially when it involves the lower extremities. Um, we see, I don't know if you can appreciate very well, but you can see maybe fingerprints. And the history on a child like this would be something like in the middle of the summer, we were having a picnic, everyone was fine, the child seemed fine. The next day the child woke up and had these brown finger-like marks all over the body. What is the problem with that history? One, the child didn't have the bruises before and woke up with what color bruising? Brown. Brown or yellowish brown. Is that consistent with a bruise? Right? An acute bruise is not going to be that color. This is more of pigmentation. So what could it be? Another picture. All over. Phytophotodermatitis, a condition um, of a photosensitivity, ultraviolet light, A, and some sensitizing things in food like limes, parsley, celery. They might have had a picnic and be in contact with this um, juices, lemonades, or vegetables, and then they touch the child, the light reacts and causes this type of pigmentation, which can last actually for several days before it resolves sometimes weeks. So you have to take the full history into account and the picture. Um, this is acute. It shouldn't be that color if it is something that just was observed. So you have to look into other findings and medical uh, professionals can help you determine that. What about this? It looks like a burn. It looks like burn. What type of burn? Second degree burn. Why? Because you have blisters, right? In the private area, you have blisters here, you have other blisters here, 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 here. Again, how did this happen? The child was in diapers. I took, removed the diapers, and this happened. What is it? There is something called bullous impetigo. Impetigo is just an infection of your skin. The bacteria of your skin, which the names are just staph and strep are just skin bacteria that can actually give you an infection and cause blistering of the skin. If it doesn't cause blistering, sometimes it, it looks like a little denuded skin and, and raises the concerns maybe for sticker burns. But there are medical conditions, and in this child, the history would be maybe this child had fever. Maybe this child was irritable. Even though it looks like a burn, it's really a medical condition or an infection that can mimic a burn. So we have to take the whole picture into account before coming with a judgment as to what is it that could be the etiology for certain findings. This is very common. We actually have had many referred for burns and for sticker burns because of this concern. And the history is 
that you know you have different sizes of these woolless lesions, and sometimes the little craters on the skin that might look super burned, but they expand. They don't stay that size. Um, they're not symmetrical, and they are of different areas of the body. What do we have here? This is just redness, streaky red. We have to be mindful also of cultural practices, right? This one is coining. Have you guys ever heard of coining? All right. Um, some uh, cultures will believe to treat ailments and to get rid of headaches, um, belly aches, fevers. You can rub menthol oils on the skin and then take the edge of the coin and just rub it until you actually get the appearance of the bruise because of the broken, irritated skin on the vessels there. It could be painful. Some kids say it is painful. Um, but is a remedy for fever say. Um, and it's a cultural practice. Parents and caretakers will need to be educated on it, but not everything was intentionally done. What about this one? Yeah, cupping. You take, you burn alcohol in a cup, and then you apply the cup to the skin, and as it cools down, it creates a suction that when you remove the cup, it actually leaves a big, round, ecumatic area, which is super smooth. And that is used to treat some ailments all over the back. Is it painful? Some kids say no, some kids say yes, some kids get used to it, but it's a cultural practice that, with some guidance, might not be repeated to, to inflict this type of um, trauma. This does not leave any sequelae, it doesn't affect your nerves, it doesn't affect your back, it doesn't affect your walking, it's not going to damage internal organs, but it's a bruise and it will heal and it, it can be painful. What do we have here? Scars? Correct? Yes. What about this shape? A little bit loopy, okay? So we have a child, and it comes, a child comes into my practice, and it looks like this. Well, first you have to ask the history about what sports are you involved with, um, where do you play? Can this occur from people running through a bush that has thorns? Yeah. Um, is there a history of that? Yes or no? Um, the loopiness of the marks. So point more towards an object, a cord. Um, something stringy that this child might have been hit with. And this is actually very old. This is already hypopigmentation of the skin. So the areas that were uh, infected have lost pigment. And that is a scar. So this is not an acute bruise, but it, the shape of it, the pattern of it, will point to something. And if you have nothing that matches from an accidental standpoint or a routine activity that a child is involved with to be responsible for this, then you worry about it to the This is what it would look like if it's more fresh. You see the greenish and you see the red. They're not different. They might be from the same impact. But they're linear. You have linearity. You have loopiness. And the child is straight. What is impacted with an object? What object? A belt. A cord, an extension cord, a um, switch, anything that could have left, left this mark for disciplinary purposes or whatever the reason was. Inappropriate, abusive nature, inflicted. Compared to this, what is this? These are, yes, stretch marks. Sometimes they do get referred though for scars from inflicted trauma, belts, and the, the kids say, yes, I got hit by a belt, and they think this is from a belt, but usually stretch marks, called stria. Stria not necessarily have to be the result of someone being overweight. Stria is actually very common with rapid growth. So kids that are in the puberty, the, the peak and the high velocity changes, growing in stature and 
developing the musculature, they might have these lesions on the lower back all across. It's actually myelodin-red or hypopigmented and on the thighs, but it's very symmetrical all around on both extremities. They can have it on the breast region and they can have it on the abdomen. Very common, but it might be confused with scars from uh, what might be think um, a belt or something linear that stroke the child. What do we have here? Is this a non-specific bruise or a pattern bruise? A pattern bruise. What does it look like? Yes, a fork. You can see the spacing in between. That means that the skin in that area was not touched. The red area is what was impacted or stroked or irritated. This is the fork. And then you look for something that might look like that at home, and then you find it, and then you see what the mechanism the cigarette lighter. Things, if they have a pattern, they're easier to determine. If it's just a non-specific bruise, a big area that has a bruise, you might not really know what caused that. If it's over a bony area, if you play activity, if it's on the abdomen and you don't have a history, it's more concerning. So you really have to take everything into account and try to figure out where the injuries came from. Burns. Burns is a big thing that we see also get referred to our center. This is just a generic picture of a burn in an actual child, of course. Now, most water temperatures, they shouldn't be over 120 degrees on the water heaters in the home. But even at 120 degrees in adult skin, you can have a, first, a second or third degree burn if you're under that heat for five minutes. As the temperature rises, 130, 140, 150, it only takes a second to burn your skin. At 160 degrees, half a second to burn your skin to a third degree or second degree burn. Um, boiling water, the temperature of boiling water, 212 degrees at sea level, boiling water. So if a boiling water pot falls on the tile, it's gonna cause a lot of damage because 120 is what we deal with under that. Now, how can this possibly happen? Could this be accidental? Anything could be accidental if you have the mechanism for it. What can we say about this tile? Was this child clothed or naked at the time of the injury? Huh? Naked? Clothed. Naked, yes. Naked. Diaper on, diaper off. Off or on? Off. Off. Good. Was the, was the baby upright in the arms, sitting, or laying down? Laying down? Sitting? Okay. Why laying down? Okay, because maybe we have this mark, right? This drip mark here. If, if something liquid and hot fell on the baby's abdomen and the baby's laying down, it's going to go down. What about here? If the baby's laying down, it's going to go down. It sort of went down here, but why it's not here? It could splash, but it's so funny that it skipped the same area all the time, right? So these are all very good thoughts. So what happened to the kid? Is this a hot object or is this a liquid? A liquid. Now we said already that it drips. All right, so then let's make up a story. Well, I was changing the baby and the mom. The baby was on the bed. And I'm, I'm changing the baby, and the baby was completely naked. And this person came over from behind me with a hot cup of soup and tripped and dropped it on the baby. Is that an accidental history? Yes. Is it fit for this? Is it fit for this? No. Why not? Because you have all these skip areas. So what happened to the kid then? 
This is how the kid was at the time the kid got burned. So does a toddler or an infant normally bring the legs up and stay like this? No. You actually have to what? To hold the baby in this position. When you hold the baby in this position, you see the skin fold are very what? Protective. So that when you release, there was no contact of whatever substance hot was spilled in the skin into those areas. That's why it's spared. So if the parent voluntarily provides, and I was holding the baby like this, and all of a sudden this happened, believe me, that is an explanation. And it's accidental. But it has to be spontaneously from the caretaker to give you all those details. Most of the time, they don't even tell you. I don't know how that happened. Or I spill something. What was the baby wearing? Oh, the onesie. Or a diaper. And then you can figure it out and put the whole history together by the findings that you see. 